I know this channel typically focuses on skincare, but I also get lots of questions about makeup and what makeup I'm wearing. And I mean, it does go on your skin. So today I'm sharing my current favorite foundations. Hey, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. If that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before I get into the specific foundations, I think it would be helpful to give you a little bit of context. So what my skin type is like, and also what I'm looking for in my foundation. So my skin type has changed a little bit. As I've gotten older, it tends to lean slightly dry. I also have rosacea, so I tend to get some redness in my cheeks. I have a little bit of sensitivity because of that. And then I get hormonal breakouts on my lower face. And that is really a new postpartum development, which is just awesome. So first and foremost, when I'm picking a foundation, I don't want it to exacerbate any of my underlying skin issues. I don't want it to dry my skin out more. I certainly don't want it to make my skin look more red or be more irritated. I'm generally wearing foundation to camouflage some of the redness. And then of course, I don't want it to break me out. In terms of coverage, I kind of like to have a range of foundations, ones that lean a little bit more sheer and then ones that have a little bit more medium coverage. I really don't ever have a use for full coverage foundations based on just what I do in my day to day. The other thing is the finish of the foundation. I like a very skin-like finish, satin maybe, all the way up to like slightly luminous, but I don't want something that's really dewy or wet, nor do I want something that's completely matte. Lastly, I do not want a foundation that's going to emphasize my skin texture. I already have slightly larger pores. And although I find that most foundations can't really blur your pores the way they might promise, there are certainly ones out there that can make your pores look worse, that can make your acne bumps look more textured. So I try to stay away from those but also some of that has to do with skin prep, which I will get to in a second. The other thing I really want in my foundation is something that is long lasting. I'm busy, I'm in clinic all day, I'm a new mom. I don't have time to look in the mirror and touch things up from time to time. Now, a lot of people are like, tell me a foundation that I can wear under my mask and won't move. I've asked every makeup artist. That doesn't exist, okay? Unless you like plaster your face, like your makeup's gonna move with the mask. But I just want something that's going to kind of stay or if it wears off over the course of the day, it wears off in a very natural way that doesn't leave me splotchy or blotchy. Now, when it comes to assessing how good your foundation looks on your skin, you really have to think of foundation like paint and paint only looks good when you apply it to a good canvas and you have a good application technique. So how you prepare your skin and how you take care of your skin in the long run, as well as how you end up applying your foundation are just as important as the foundation product that you're using. It absolutely can take some trial and error to figure out how to prep your skin for your foundation. And you might find that you need to prepare your skin differently depending on what foundation you plan on using. You also might need a different technique depending on the foundation. So some you may be able to apply with your fingers some might work better with a brush, some better with a beauty sponge or beauty blender. So it takes a little bit of practice. I tend to prepare my skin almost the same way every time because I found that it works and it tends to work with the foundations that I reach for on a regular basis. So typically I will first go in with this Laneige Cream Skin Refiner Mist. I used to go in with a regular moisturizer, which also works very well, but this is just so like so lightweight. And I like to put that on before I put my sunscreen on. And I usually am layering sunscreen under my foundation because oftentimes I'm applying my foundation in the beginning of the day. So first thing I'll do is I'll go in with that refiner mist just to add a light layer of moisturization and a little bit of dewiness to the skin. I'll then go in with my sunscreen. I have tried tons of different sunscreens under makeup. I have a few that I love. So the Beauty of Chosan, which I talk about a lot on this channel, I think works beautifully under foundation. I've also now been reaching a ton for the EV Tech Technology SPF 50 sunscreen foam. That is such a grippy primer for my foundation. And if I want my foundation to last all day, I will go with that one. Oh, one other thing. I, I promise I'm gonna get to the foundations, but I really like to have my face sort of shaved or free of peach fuzz before I apply my makeup. I just find my foundation looks so much better when it's not clinging to all the little peach fuzz on my jawline. So if you haven't seen my dermaplaning video, which is where I talk you through how I shave my face and how I prep my skin, you should go watch it, but that will up your makeup application game so much. Okay, let's get into the foundations. I have to start out with a shout out and almost like a eulogy to 
to the MAC Face and Body Foundation. I do not think they make this anymore, or at least when I went to go order it, I could only find it on Amazon, which was a little sus. This foundation is my oldest, longest standing love when it comes to foundation. It's a water-based foundation. It gives sheer to light coverage, but looks so, so skin-like when you apply it. Now, I think they've replaced it with their Face and Body Radiant Sheer Foundation, so I definitely need to pick that up and try it because if it's anything like the original MAC Face and Body, I know I will be in love. I've definitely seen some beauty influencers talk about the new MAC Face and Body and say it's wonderful, but if you have personally tried it, let me know in the comments and tell me what your experience has been. Before I move on to talk about the other foundations that are actually available to you, I do want to take a second to talk about acne and foundation because I feel like MAC is the original formula where people were like, oh, it breaks me out. It causes all these problems. And the reality is makeup technology has come a long way. Foundations generally are non-comedogenic or non-pore clogging. Now that might be different for every person. And it's very hard to look at an ingredient list of a foundation and know whether or not it's going to break you out or exacerbate your acne. There is a definite degree of trial and error that's needed to figure that out. But if you are using good skincare, if you are exfoliating properly, if you are taking care of your acne in other ways, makeup generally should not make that worse. Moving on, one of my current favorite foundations, and in fact, this is like almost empty, is the Summer Fridays Sheer Skin Tint. Full disclosure, I am an advisor for the brand, but the thing that I really like about this sheer skin tint is although the coverage is sheer, it still does a very good job of evening out your skin tone. And on those sort of like no makeup, not even makeup days, like you don't want to put makeup on, but your skin needs a little bit of help. This is what I reach for. And this is great for if I'm going to be in clinic all day, but I just want my skin to look a little bit refreshed, a little less red, but still very natural. I feel like you'd use it in the same way that you would want to use a tinted moisturizer, like that degree of coverage. But I actually really love that this is not a tinted moisturizer. And the reason I say that is because when I'm putting on my moisturizer for the day, I want to pick how much moisturizer I'm using based on how much moisturization I want, not by how much pigment is going to get deposited on my skin. And same goes for sunscreens and tinted SPFs. I find that people sometimes under apply their tinted SPF because they don't want to have too much coverage or they don't want it to look cakey. Whereas when you're using this sheer skin tint, you're using it on top of your sunscreen and you can pick the exact amount of product you want to apply in order to get the coverage that you want. And you don't have to think about, well, is this going to give me enough moisturization or enough sun protection? Because that's not what you're using it for. The sheer skin tint currently comes in 10 shades. And I find because it's so sheer, you can kind of have a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to the shade match. For example, I would describe my skin tone as light with neutral to warm undertones. But when I picked out my shade, I actually grabbed shade two, which on their website is light with cool undertones, but it still works for me. And then the way I apply this is really just with my fingertips. I probably put on maybe like a dime to a nickel sized amount. Once my sunscreen has fully, fully dried down, I really love that this has such a natural finish to it and it dries down pretty much completely. So you don't really need to powder it down. You can, and I often do just because I want to ensure as much longevity as possible. But even if you're applying it on the go, it doesn't remain tacky on the skin, which I really, really like. So if you're new to makeup or foundation intimidates you, or you know someone that's new to makeup, for example, I have lots of patients whose kids are just starting to want to wear makeup, but they're a little heavy handed with higher coverage foundations. This might be a good first place to start. And it's also just great for low maintenance days when you just want a little bit of easy coverage and not to go all in, but still look a little bit more flawless. Moving on to another favorite that definitely has more coverage, and that is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I have been a huge fan of the Charlotte Tilbury lip products for such a long time, and I don't know why I hadn't tried any of the complexion products, but wow, they're awesome. This is definitely a medium coverage foundation, but I also find that I can sheer it out depending on how I apply it. But in my mind, a medium coverage foundation can basically take away all of my redness, get rid of some of my hyperpigmentation and melasma, but still give me a very natural look depending on what other makeup products I'm applying it with. I often will reach for medium coverage foundations when I'm shooting video like this, when I'm doing photography, or when I'm going to an event like a conference or a wedding. So why do I like this particular medium coverage foundation so much? One, I actually really like this packaging. It's incredibly convenient. It's super lightweight. It's very easy to sort of toss in my makeup bag. I also like that it applies very beautifully with just your fingertips. So I don't need my brush or my beauty blender or anything like that to get a really solid, gorgeous application. I also like that it feels very hydrating and nourishing on the skin and doesn't really weigh my skin down, even though it has really good coverage. In some ways, it sort of reminds me of the It Cosmetic CC Cream, where when you apply it, you're like, whoa, my 
my skin looks flawless, but it's not as heavy and doesn't tend to get as cakey as the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. So I feel like this has totally replaced that for me. I actually first tried this foundation after getting a recommendation from a friend and I very much trust this person's opinion. So I went out and I got it and I put it on and I went straight to my Instagram because I was like, whoa, my skin looks awesome. And then a few of you subsequently purchased it and then DM'd me like, yeah, you're right. This is really, really good. And then in terms of shades, I'm shade four neutral. And then for my final favorite current foundation, wow, say that five times fast, is the uh, Dior Forever Skin Glow. And that's actually what I have on my face right now. I think this is a fantastic medium to even full coverage foundation, depending on how you apply it, that gives just a beautiful radiance to the skin. And they describe the finish of this foundation as radiant, and I tend to agree. I don't have any highlighter or anything like that on. I just have the foundation, a little bit of Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder, and then my bronzer. And I feel like the skin looks healthy. It looks luminous. But when I touch the foundation, it's not wet or tacky to the touch. And I think that's huge. I want full dry down. I'm wearing shade 2N and I've applied it today with a damp beauty blender or beauty sponge. I've applied it in the past with my fingertips and I think that works pretty well. But I think the application is just a little bit more flawless when I go in with the sponge. There are a couple things I want to note about this foundation. And one is that it has fragrance, kind of floral, a little bit sweet. I tend to notice it only when I smell it out of the bottle, like a weirdo. Uh, when I actually apply it to my face, I find that the fragrance dissipates quite quickly. But if you are sensitive to fragrance, either the aroma itself gives you a headache or you just don't enjoy it, or if your skin is particularly sensitive to fragrance, this might be one to skip. The other thing is this foundation has an SPF of 15. And I'm really just going to use this as a reminder to not rely on the sunscreen that's in your makeup for true sun protection. The reason for this is in order to get the SPF that's stated on the bottle, whether that's a bottle of foundation or a bottle of sunscreen, you need to apply the proper amount. And for most people, that is about a quarter a teaspoon for the face. And when people apply their foundation, they don't tend to apply an entire quarter teaspoon. And if they do, we need to talk to them about their makeup application. So the fact that this has SPF 15 in it, that really is only meaningful if you're applying a quarter teaspoon. If you're applying less than that, which you probably are, then the amount of SPF or sun protection that you're getting in this product is pretty negligible. So I would go ahead and put on your normal sunscreen amount underneath this foundation. And I'm not mad that there's sunscreen screen in this, but I also am not relying on it. Now, I feel like the question is going to come up like, how do you choose between Charlotte Tilbury and Dior? They're both medium coverage foundations. And you're right. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a tricky choice. I do like the ease of the Charlotte Tilbury one, like that I can apply it with my fingers and shear it out really well. And so there's this ease that comes with that one. I also like that it's not fragranced like the Dior one. Sometimes I'm just not in the mood to have any fragrance in my routine. And in that case, I would pick the Charlotte Tilbury one. I do think that the Dior foundation lasts a little bit longer. So if I'm doing like an all day photo shoot or filming for a long time or at a wedding, that might be the one I choose. But the Charlotte Tilbury one is just great for like every day, want to throw something on with a little bit of coverage, have it in my makeup bag at work, put it in my purse because it's not in a glass bottle. So I like both. I ordered both of them with the thought that I was going to be returning one and then I kept both of them. And you know, foundation like skincare is very personal. And sometimes you have to kiss a lot of foundation frogs before you find your foundation prints. So don't hesitate to try different foundations, try different application methods, try layering it with different sunscreens. You kind of got to find what works for you. And that can take a little bit of time investment or even sometimes a little bit of a monetary investment. But once you find that foundation that you love, that looks good on your skin, that gives you confidence, it is all worth it. And on that note, what's your favorite foundation? Tell me in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.